And that way you will get less tired and you'll be able to do that for longer periods of time. So that click means I'm hitting the heart. For this little device, yes. I had to go down a long way away. I had to go down so far that I would yes. never have naturally done that to somebody. I would have thought that I was going to do more damage. Correct. And because of that fear that people have, we unfortunately have worse outcomes with people who have cardiac arrest in the field. And in fact, most cardiac arrests, meaning heart stopping, happen not in hospital settings. Hmm. They happen in community settings. They happen on the street, at dinners with our loved ones. And the important point to remember here, this isn't what you do for someone who's talking and is having a heart attack. This is for cardiac arrest. They're not talking, they're not moving, they're not breathing. Because if they're talking, that means they have a pulse. Because mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I've seen in some videos online, like someone's trying to talk or moving around and people are doing chest compression. I'm like, no, stop, he's doing chest compression. But if they're pulseless, if they're not breathing, they're unconscious, start hands-only CPR after calling for help. I can't, I really want to emphasize how hard I had to push down Correct. then. It wasn't just like pushing on the surface. I had to put all my weight and shove down on the chest. And you know that insecurity about the amount of pressure that you yeah. were talking about? There's even worse outcomes for women who have a cardiac arrest because people are afraid of pushing in between breasts. Uh... If the person's life can be saved when first responders arrive because you bought them time, do it. It's not fair that women are less likely to receive CPR from bystanders because of their bodies. I thought, because I think, again, because I've watched so many movies, that when you start doing the CPR, the person comes back to life. It can happen. Okay. Because I thought that's what you were doing. I thought you were like bringing them back to life. That's what it, that's the notion that some people have. And that's why I wanted to make sure that you're not actually bringing them back to life. You're buying them time and circulating the residual oxygen so that help can arrive to try and restart the heart. How long do you have to do, what's the longest you've had to do CPR on someone for, and then they've ended up surviving? I've been in um, double digits before for young okay. patients, um, because young patients, we will, like, if you have a patient who's elderly, who's in the ICU, who's already very sick, when their heart stops, the odds are that you'll bring them back are obviously very low. 